Okay. Uh, just giving you a little bit of an update on the rocket mass heater. Uh, did a couple things to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, besides looking at the big barrel, now I got a brick face on the front of it. Uh, it doesn't look perfect. I didn't cut very good as far as the bricks are concerned, but it's a lot better than what it was. It needs to go a little higher to conceal the whole uh, barrel, but like I was saying, it looks a little bit better than it did before. Uh, everybody, um, all my friends were telling me that the door looked like a microwave door when it was silver, so I painted it black and it does look a little bit better. Um, aside from the aesthetics of performance, I've been pretty happy with. I think it's been like a week or a week and a half since I've been running it. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it, pretty satisfied. Um, it does retain uh, a good amount of heat throughout the night. I usually start a fire around 6 o'clock in the evening, uh, maybe 5 on a really cold day. Um, it hasn't been very cold here in New Mexico, so uh, the heat requirement during the day has been like nothing. And one of the reasons for that is because the bench seats seem to be retaining a heat in between fires no lower than uh, 95 degrees. So when I get up in the morning, uh, even after a cold night, the top of the flagstone is still radiating a temperature of 95 degrees um, when the fire went out at 9 or 10 in the evening. So I've been pretty happy with its performance. Um, I did have to keep on doing a few sealing here and there uh, within the bench seat in order to seal up all the cracks and all the smoke. Um, as far as the maximum temperatures are concerned, uh, <clears throat> the barrel at its highest point got up to 820 degrees. 820 degrees, that's pretty high. And even with the uh, barrel getting up to 820, the wall behind it ne never got above 140 or 145. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, However, I did put a radiant barrier of concrete block behind the barrel and now the wall never exceeds 100. And so that's been pretty good. Um, like I said, I, I put the brick face. Uh, I did have a, a P-channel. It wasn't really a P-channel. It was more like a straight channel that was one inch by two inches. And it went in front of the, um, <clears throat> the port in the back of the batch box. Uh, but it was too far forward, so I completely took it out and I just covered it up for right now. And uh, I plan on modifying that P channel so that I can get the, uh, the, the ex exit of the channel as close to the port as I can around one inch, so apparently is what I understand it to be. Um, so I've been pretty happy with its performance. What I do is um, I have a, a a CPU fan uh, at the very top of the smokestack just before the, um, the cap and I turn that fan on when I'm starting the fire and then I turn it off uh, after I uh, get the fire going a little bit. And then I've been closing the damper down a little bit after I get some good burning wood in there and it makes the fire burn a lot slower and a lot longer and the temperature may not get as high, but it burns for longer, you use less wood, and so it's been pretty good in that respect too. Um, real quick again, I wanted to thank uh, Matt Walker for his uh, information, his videos, and his website. Also Paul Wheaton, Paul Wheaton and his uh, permies.com, uh, got some great information about rocket mass heaters on there, um, as well as uh, Peter Vander Vandenberg. Thank you all for um, the really awesome ideas that I got from your YouTube channel. And uh, hope you like it. Uh, feel free to make comments, subscribe, give your opinion, like, like it, share it with friends. Um, I'm going to be continuing to do uh, some more green energy project projects pretty soon. I'll be a, doing a batch water heater that will supply my kitchen sink with uh, some hot water. And I'll do a video on that and, and give you an update on how its performance was also. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, come back and visit. I hope you have a good day. Thank you.